Ladies and gentlemen, we now present George Edwards in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. can such a thing be done? They do say it were her spine that got hurt. It were a terrible fall she had, right down to the bottom of the old tin warden. Have any really good doctors seen her? Just the best we had in Bodmin. Bodmin's a very pretty little town, but I don't suppose it boasts anything very outstanding in the way of a bone specialist. Oh, no. There ain't no one there at all as you could rightly call a specialist. Just Dr. Lethbridge. And him not so young, neither. Then that gives me fresh hope. I have a friend in London who's performed miracles on people who've been thought to be crippled for life. When do you think I could see her? Well, she be living where her aunt about nine miles from here. Maybe you could hire a landlord's horse and trap and drive across. Will you come with me? Nay, I couldn't be leaving father for so long. He's asleep now or I'd never have got away as it is. But do you think she'd talk to me and let me examine her... If she hadn't you to tell her I was a friend. Why, for sure. She's only got to look at your face, for one thing. Is it a face that you would trust, Hester? It's... It's a face the like of which I've never seen afore. Like a picture I once seen somewhere. When I were a little child. So kind. So sad. So... So beautiful. Thank you, Hester, my dear. Thank you. You can't possibly know what it means to hear that from you. Why from me? You have known Hyde. Hyde? What has he got to do with ye? Don't speak of him. Just let me forget. Very well, then. I'll not mention him again. And now, if you'd like to go back to your father... I'll walk along the road with you. That be right kindly, but there bain't any need. It's bright moonlight, and I ain't far to go. But I feel the need of a little walk. It's rather stuffy in this little room with such a big fire. That's if you don't mind my coming with you. Of course I don't. I'd be glad of your company. Let's go, then. I'll just put on this coat and scarf. <laughs> By the way, I, I think I'd... Rather, you didn't say anything to the people in the village about my trying to get Thurza cured and Sam brought back from South Africa. You can rely on me. I'll keep mum and no mistake. Good. Shall we go then? I want you to trust me. I've come all the way from London to try and help you, but without your assistance, I... Well, I can't do anything. Why should you be troubling yourself about me, Dr. Jekyll? Well, that's a question I can't answer. But does it really matter? I've heard your story. In a curious way, I'm compelled to hold myself responsible for things that I did. I want to try and put them right. Isn't that enough? Responsible for Hyde? Then I pity you. You've a load of guilt laid on your soul. That'll wear it to the ground. Yes, I know. Someone once said those words to me a long time ago. No one but myself knows how true they are. I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt you. Please don't look that way. You make me feel fair shamed of myself. So kind you are and... Me talking to you like that. Then you'll let me do what I can for you. If I've been ungrateful, it's because I daren't let myself have hope. You can't dream what it's like to lie here year <laughs> after year with nothing to hope for but dying. Now, that's all past. I feel sure that something can be done for you. If you'll let me look at your back and see where the injury was. How did it happen did you lose your way and stumble into the old mine? No, I did not lose my way. I knew where I were right enough. Then what happened? Uh, do you remember very much? Why shouldn't I? Is it like that I'd forget? No. No, I suppose not. 
But I was just interested to know if the fall had caused you to forget any of the things that, that happened just before the accident. It uh, sometimes does, you know. I remember everything. At night when I lie here in the dark, I can even see his face and hear his voice. You mean hides? You didn't suspect that he were there, did you? I told no one. What were the use he'd gone? No one had seen Hyde nor hair of him after that night. And some poor lad, he were nigh out of his mind as it were. He blamed Hyde for what had happened. And wasn't it because of him? If he'd never set foot in Marston Bridge, me and Sam had been wed this three year past. And poor mother. Oh, well, let her rest in peace. And you've kept the secret all this time. I. But you shouldn't. It's bad for you. You say you see his face and hear his voice when you lie here in the dark. Aye, clear as can be it is. I can hear the wind blowing and feel a bit of rain in my face. And I'm stumbling across the moors, not heeding where I'm going, half mad with hurt and sorrow. How long I wanted there, I've no way of knowing. They told me afterwards that they were searching for me with lanterns, but I never seen them. And all at once, as I came along the little path near the top of the mine shaft, I seen someone standing afore me. They'll give me a turn, it did. Who be you? Is it Thursa? Well, well. What are you doing out here alone? Hide. What be you doing here? I'm on my way to the nearest railway station. I have a kind of idea I'm not very welcome at Marston Bridge much longer. Welcome? You were never welcome. You were hated from the first moment you set foot on the place. You're thinking of Sham's dog? That and all the other things you did. You'll be hated round this place so long as any of us remains alive to remember you. Come, come. Is it so bad as that? Won't your mother think a little kindly of me sometimes? How can you mock at her like that? Haven't you done enough without laughing at our shame? My dear child, you take these things too hard. That's what comes of living in a little place like Marston Bridge. If you were in London, for instance... But I'm not. I'm in Marston Bridge. And I've got to live there the rest of my life and suffer the punishment that you've brought on us. What punishment will you have to suffer? I were turned out of Sam's house this very night. <laughs> you were? That's splendid. <laughs> I never hoped for anything so good as that. <laughs> good? Is that what you call good? Broken hearts and broken lives. Have you no pity, no mercy at all in that heart of yours? <laughs> pity <laughs> and mercy, not a grain of it. Don't you know what I am? I'm evil, pure evil. Never before in the entire history of man has there ever been another creature like myself. <laughs> Hell itself has nothing to rival me. You're mad. I can tell it. It's too dark to see your face, but I can guess the way it looks. It's not a pleasant face, is it? No one likes my face. I love to see the way they shudder and turn sick. <laughs> How would you like to have it close to yours, my dear? Yeah. How would you like to feel my cheek against yours? Don't stop it! Get away from me! Won't let me pass! Not till you've given me a kiss. Do you think it was your mother I really wanted? No. No. It was you. You beast. You fiend. Let go of me. I'd die before I... Oh, no, you wouldn't. Life is very sweet, my child. And what's a kiss? Soon over. And you'll find it's not so bad. Come now. Be sensible. Never. Never. If you knew the way I hate you. Then I'll take it for myself. I'd have let you off lightly if you'd been civil. Now you'll pay dearly for the things you've said. No. No, I will not do you all. You little vixen, sink your teeth into me, would you? Oh. So you got away. Look out. Where are you going? Mind the edge of the cutting. Mind the... Gone. She's gone. Little fool. Sam Forlorn's dog. That brute hates me. I'd better go, or he'll be on my tracks. Let's see. 
What way? Uh, there's a glimpse of the moon. I'll have to keep it on my right. And then I'll strike the road. Where's my stick and bag? Ah, there they are. That's good. That's very good. The ground is stony here. No one will see my footsteps. They'll never know that anyone was here besides the girl. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Show your lantern here, Ted. Badges onto something here. He'd never bark that way for nothing. Where are we? By the edge of the old tin working. Lord of mercy, don't say it. Look, what's up? See, that little bush there, almost torn out by the roots. I wish it. Mightn't have someone had grabbed it. Oh, look, there's a piece of something flapping in the wind. It's a bit of cloth. Her dress, she's here. Oh, she's fallen down the shaft. Here, wait a minute, Sam. You're never going down there like but that. she's down there. Thurs is down there. You must have ropes, man, and more like his suicide to go without. Do you think that I can stop here and her down here. there? Hold him. Yeah. You don't let him go. Down, down there. Steady, lad. Oh. Us knows the way you feel, but there'd be no use in two of you going down head first into yon shaft. Oh, she might be dead. There's water down there. Oh, wait a minute. There's her... Thurser, can you hear me? Thurser, it's she. She's answered. We're coming, lass. We're coming down for you. You go for ropes. You go for ropes, Ted and Billy. I'll wait here. I'll stop here and call from time to time. It'll give her heart to wait. And hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry. Keep your courage, lass. As soon as we have ropes and lanterns, we'll get you up. It won't be long. I promise you, it won't be long. my heart. And by and by I see them coming down the cut and when they got to me and started to carry me up to the top I don't remember anymore. The pain must have been terrible. It were worse nor anything I ever dreamed a body could endure. There might be more pain for you, Thurza, before you get well again. I'd like to tear me limb from limb if I could walk again and be like other folks. Then there is something I've got to do. You shall walk through Marston Bridge and back to your own home, and then perhaps you'll not lie in the dark anymore and see the face of Edward Hyde.